Today we're heading to the only place in Arizona that you could drive to where you can see the Las Vegas Strip. Hey everyone, welcome to Sidetrack Adventures. This is Steve. Now if you can't tell from the ocean waves behind me, I'm in Kingman, Arizona. Because nothing says Kingman, Arizona like the sights of the ocean. So recently I've been studying a map of the Arizona Territory from 1865, after Arizona first became a territory. And it's pretty interesting because there are towns that are missing, such as Phoenix, which is now the largest city in Arizona. And there are a lot of towns that are on there that no longer exist. But maybe the most interesting part of the map is the northwest corner, because that part of Arizona is now southern Nevada, including the city of Las Vegas, which is the largest city in Nevada by far. So it's crazy to think that Las Vegas was once part of Arizona. Now, of course, now it's miles away from Arizona, but that brings us to today's video, because today we're gonna try to go to a place in Arizona where we could still see the Las Vegas Strip. From Kingman, we're gonna drive about 52 miles to the Lake Mead National Recreation Area. Lake Mead is a very popular park, but most people tend to visit the Nevada part of the park, and the Arizona section doesn't get as many visitors. The plan is to travel some of the old mine roads in the park in order to get a viewpoint where we should be able to see Las Vegas, which sits about 20 miles from the Arizona state line. There might be other places in the mountains around Lake Mead in Arizona where you could see Vegas, but where we're going today is supposedly the only place in Arizona that you could reach by car where you could see it. We are now getting our first views of Lake Mead off in the distance. For anyone who doesn't know, Lake Mead is the largest reservoir in the United States and was created when the Boulder Dam, now Hoover Dam, was constructed on the Colorado River in the 1930s. We have now left the pavement and are on Benelli Landing Road. Just north of here was the location of a ferry that would shuttle people across the Colorado River. The ferry lasted from 1876 until Lake Mead covered the landing in 1935. In 1876, they charged $10 per wagon to ferry across, plus 50 cents each additional person. This road from the ferry into Arizona led to a number of mines and mining towns, and we're now about to head on one of the old mining roads ourselves. This is the part where the road is supposed to get a bit rougher, but hopefully there's some great things to see along the way. And it is a little bit overcast right now, but I'm still hopeful that we'll have some great views of Las Vegas. We've now moved to the Kohenor Loop Road, named for the Kohenor Mine, which I believe was a copper mine. We have no cell service out here, but I read about this drive in an issue of Arizona Highways Magazine, and the directions seem pretty straightforward, so hopefully we don't get lost. We should be coming up on a place called Petroglyph Wash pretty soon. I'm starting to see a lot of the volcanic rock that you often find petroglyphs on, so I think we've arrived at Petroglyph Wash. We'll take a look around and see if we could find any petroglyphs, and to be honest, I'm just assuming with a name like Petroglyph Wash, there are petroglyphs here. A lot of these rocks have what look like they're markings on them from far away, but then when you get closer, you can tell these aren't petroglyphs. This area was home to the Anasazi, or Ancestral Puebloans, about a thousand years ago, and then more recently the Paiute. I don't know if the mic is picking it up, but that noise you hear in the background are helicopters. There are helicopters traveling by every couple of minutes because of tours going from Las Vegas to the Grand Canyon. There has also been a lot of jets flying by. We haven't seen another car on the road, 
but we've probably seen at least 20 helicopters. I don't know, I feel like these rocks are probably all too exposed. If there ever were any petroglyphs on them, they've probably been weathered away by now. Let me take a quick look at this pile and then we'll move on. Unfortunately, no petroglyphs, just some natural weathering. We've come down the road just a little bit, and now there are a lot more of these big rocks that look like they would be great places for some petroglyphs. But I've still seen a lot of natural weathering, but so far, not a single petroglyph. If I climbed up the hill more, maybe I might find something, but from down here I'm just really not seeing anything that looks like petroglyphs. This area is supposed to have a lot of wild burrows and a lot of wild horses, and we've seen their droppings, but so far, aside from birds, we haven't seen any animals out here. If I was making petroglyphs, I'd put it on a rock like this, like a big billboard for everyone coming by. But honestly, these might just be too exposed. There may have been petroglyphs on these rocks at some point in the past, but because they're so exposed, they could have just been weathered away over time. We'll take a look at this big rock over here, and if there's nothing, we'll keep on moving. So far, Petroglyph Wash hasn't lived up to its name. I've just took a look back the way we've come and noticed we can still see Lake Mead off in the distance. Okay, so I've just driven a little further. And is this the first Petroglyph we've seen? It's a little hard to tell. This could be natural or it could be a symbol. But this is the first thing that looks like a Petroglyph. So we're going to take a little bit of a closer look around these rocks here. We're not leaving Petroglyph Wash without seeing a Petroglyph. It looks like there's a little path here, so let's climb up. It's probably for burrows or mountain goats. The hard part is there's a lot of natural weathering on these rocks that looks like petroglyphs from a distance, but then once you get closer, you realize no petroglyphs. And I think climbing up here was a bust. Well, all we could do is keep heading down the road. Of course, just a little bit further down the road is a sign. And behind the sign, Petroglyphs. Petroglyph wash is not a bust after all, and there's actually quite a few of them here. And these look pretty cool. They've dated the petroglyphs in this area from about 1200 to about 1800, so they're probably Paiute in origin and not ancestral Puebloan. They are definitely all over the place here. Every time I see petroglyphs, my mind just wanders thinking about what these possibly could have meant. If anyone else is ever doing this drive, this is Petroglyph Wash. Don't stop at a bunch of random places before you get here. It was pretty clear this morning, but a few more clouds have come in now. So let's go ahead and get to the viewpoint 
and hopefully it's not too overcast and we got a great view of Las Vegas. We should only have about four or five miles left to go. It looks like there could be an old mine up there. There are a lot of remains from the old mining days laying around out here. I believe up on the hill is the old Konor mine that I mentioned earlier that the road is named after. I think we've about made it to the end of the road. We've reached the end of the road at Indian Pass and the views from up here are incredible. And as advertised, even though it's a little overcast, there's the Las Vegas Strip. I know it's probably really hard to see on camera, and I'll try to zoom in a little bit, but there it is, Las Vegas in the distance, 20 miles away. And here's Fortification Hill. I think this is the first time I've ever seen it from the back. There is no way the camera is doing this view justice. I think it's incredible that you can actually camp here. You could drive out here, stay the night, and probably have an amazing view of the Las Vegas lights. The Pope Mine is supposed to be up here as well, that's why this road exists. And I'm not sure if this kind of depression is left over from it, but I don't see anything else mine related up here. I'm going to walk up a little higher and see if we find anything else left over from the mine. And I guess if not, worst case scenario, we get another incredible view. It's kind of amazing to think that we're in a very popular national park at a spot with an absolutely incredible one-of-a-kind view and we haven't seen another person all day. Well, I guess aside from maybe the 50 helicopters that have flown by. Well, no mine up here but the view has gotten even better. Wow, there are so many helicopters flying by. I feel like I'm back in the army again. I should have done one of those epic revealing shots when we first got here. But here's one last look at Lake Mead in Las Vegas in the distance from Indian Pass. So that's our look at the Lake Mead mine roads and seeing Las Vegas from Arizona. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and we'll see you next week.